In this Northern Brewer video, we're distilling spirits with our friends at BSG Handcraft and RAR Technical Center. We brew malt and sugar washes here at Northern Brewer, then take the wash to the RTC for a two-day masterclass on small-scale distillation on both the Grainfather G30 and the Still Spirits Air Still. Stripping run, spirit run, dilution, and the first round of taste testing for blending. Hello everyone, here at NBHQ, I'm Chip, this is William. Uh, we want to share some really cool video from a project that is ongoing at this point. Um, last week we spent two days at the RAR Technical Center, uh, which is on the RAR Malting Company campus, with our good friend Ilya Soroka. Yeah. He works for BSG Handcraft, represents still spirits line of everything, knows a hell of a lot about distilling yes, and yeah. distillation. He also uh, pushes their distilling equipment, ingredients, whatnot. So he knows a lot. We shot a bunch of video there that's going to roll out in the next Bunch. weeks, months or so, but we wanted to kind of wrap it up at the very beginning and just share with you some of our personal perspective and just like nerd out a little bit about what we experienced yeah. while we were there. If you want to make sure you do see those forthcoming videos from this series, be sure to like this video, subscribe to our YouTube channel, ring that bell, of course, and share this video with someone who will dig it. All right, let's get into it. You're about to see a whole bunch of cool equipment and processes involved in distilling at RAR Technical Center. But first, it's very important to note that the RTC is a fully licensed distillery for professional distillation. We can't legally distill here at Northern Brewer HQ, which is why we teamed up with BSG and RAR for this project. However, we can make wash here. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> and that's what we decided to do. We decided to make two batches of wash, 10 gallons of malt derived wash, 10 gallons of sugar uh, derived wash. The malt wash we're going to put through the pot still version of the G30 and the sugar wash we're going to put through the condenser version of the G30 as well as the little guy, the little tabletop air still. For the malt wash, pretty much like any brew day, we made a wort of 100% RAR two row malt, added glucoamylase enzyme to help break down the sugars for fermentation, ran off the wort, boiled it for just a few minutes to sterilize it, then chilled it. OG was 1072. We pitched still spirits whiskey distiller's yeast, fermented it in the upper 70s, and it dropped super low. Final gravity 0.998 for a malt wash with a starting ABV of about 9.7%. Had a very interesting, spicy kind of phenolic. We both noted the second we took the lid off the carboy, we were like, is this a Belgian? Belgian like yeah. a Belgian table beer? Yeah. But I'm sure that phenolic is also the booze, but also this no hopped malt wort. <laughs> Fermented fairly warm. Yeah. Sugar wash process, on the other hand, was very unique, something we never <laughs> experienced. I mean, the thing I would liken it closest to is maybe a hard seltzer, but not really once we started adding things. For the 10 gallons, we started off with 25 pounds of sugar into the water to get us a OG of 1.102, which is almost off our hydrometer scale, I believe. Uh, so then we just did a quick 10 minute boil to sterilize that, make sure nothing was in there that we didn't want in there doing the fermentation and then chilled that down to 70 degrees. From there, we uh, per the instructions on the classic eight turbo yeast that we used, uh, we rehydrated that. Uh, you want to make sure you rehydrate it so that all the nutrients break down and get in solution. And then we also just agitated that on our stir plate for about 10 minutes, just again, to make sure everything was in solution. You can see that most of it broke down. Some stuff didn't break down. We reached out, that's okay. You just want the majority of it to break down. Also important to note, you wanna use that full packet in each five gallons. It's blended for that. So as you can see, the high gravity sugar was a clear liquid after chilling. Uh, upon adding the yeast that was rehydrated, it becomes this cloudy, milky white. Uh, that's where the fun kind of really starts to begin or diverge from <laughs> what we're used to. Cause you know, we're like, okay, odd color, <laughs> but okay. <laughs> and then we added the turbo carbon, which is just going to help you get a cleaner spirit in the end. And that stuff was mind blowing to us. <laughs> uh, you first, you start off, you massage the packet because it's really hard and it becomes, you can see that you can feel it becomes more liquid and then you pour it in. <laughs> and it's like squid ink. Like, yeah. And at first it went in the top. So we're just seeing this little spot of black, but once you stirred it up, we're like, 
is this right? Yeah. Are we fermenting grape juice? And and the mixing <laughs> of the milky white cloudy stuff with the, the purpley black, it was, it was, to be honest, I think we double checked the instructions a few times because it was just out of our norm. Yeah. <laughs> and the, the fermentation was equally wacky looking as well. Quick bit of video. You can just see really aggressive fermentation, but not a croisin, of course, but these big gooey bubbles at the surface just popping. It just looks so strange. It looked yeah. like something like out of the Black Lagoon. Yep. And even the, the Croizen ring left that like little, it yeah. wasn't super thick, but it was, it was different. <laughs> Fermentation, of course, only took a couple of days. That yeast is meant to just power through it. Uh, very look, odd looking yeast cake, gritty purple. <laughs> yeah, it was odd when I went to clean it. Um, definitely gritty purple black. Uh, I wouldn't wear white shirts or pants or anything like that if that splashes on you. <laughs> the FG on this sugar wash, bonkers. 0.985, making this a starting ABV of 15% for our sugar wash. So here's where we get into the actual distillation. Our boy Ilya picked up five gallons of each, the malt and the sugar wash, uh, ahead of our video shoot. He wanted to do a little uh, pre-video distillation so that we kind of have that cooking show magic where there's like a turkey already in the oven. He wanted to do a stripping run of each of those so that the day we were there and did a stripping run, then we could combine it all. It's kind of confusing. There was a flow chart that, <laughs> that we were both a little like, I trust you, Ilya. Yeah. So Tuesday of last week, we rolled out the Shakopee, Minnesota RAR malting company with our two kegs of wash, very eager to get started. We walked into the distillation space and we're kind of shocked, really. Let's talk a little bit about the space. It's not your average home domestic space no, for sure. It is a purpose built room, well laid out and small. Yeah. <laughs> um, one of the things that pops out is that whole water manifold bank there, which is really just their cold water supply to each still. So it looks overwhelming, but it's just basically their faucet. Yeah. This is a space where their brew crew, their lab crew actually distill for R&D purposes, whether that's malts and enzymes, flavorings, equipment. So it was yep. really funny to see this, like, I can't remember how many... Is it three hectoliters? I can't remember. I believe so. Okay, but. this like cool real still, and then all of a sudden like <laughs> a little G30 and a G30 and an air still. <laughs> air still, yeah. Just to see kind of the processes uh, comparatively laid out. But it was small. We were basically like, behind you, behind you. Yeah. Kind of like kitchen mode. <laughs> yeah. And we all three got put to work. I was shooting video for the most part, but we definitely all got put to work. So let's look at our setup. We got a Grainfather G30 topped with a Still Spirit stainless steel T500 reflux condenser, five gallons capacity. We've got another G30 topped with the Still Spirits copper alembic condenser, better known as a pot still, also five gallons capacity. And then our little guy, the little engine that could, the Still yeah. Spirits air still, one gallon capacity. Again, Ilya will be coming up to NBHQ in the coming weeks to throw down some like legit in knowledge in depth on these products, but this is really just kind of a, a bird's eye view at the process. So we're about to say stripping run and spirit run a lot. Can you just like bird's eye view of yeah. what those are? Stripping run, you are just pulling out the alcohol. You don't just, care about the heads, you don't care about the tails, you don't care about anything. You're just trying to get the alcohol out of there. Um, and basically you do a couple stripping runs to combine those together to get a more efficient spirit run. And the spirit run is where you start separating out the heads the hearts, the tails. Um, just You're a little, little more bit. concerned about these different um, sections of distillate. Yes. Versus on the first day, you're just milking it. Yep. You're squeezing it out. Yeah. The, the next day, one day was you're trying to make sure for us too, because we didn't have to <laughs> yeah, <laughs> collect yeah. jars. And throughout that entire process, everything is just getting reduced and condensed. It's almost kind of like making a syrup and condensing it, but here yep. you're leaving water behind and collecting really high proof yeah. alcohol liquid we should say every time we opened one of these distills afterwards oh. it was absolutely oh. not appealing smelling oh. at all so you really are leaving behind unfavorables undesirables and collecting through this balance of temperature and um, attention the yeah. best parts of this wash yeah Let's start with the air still. This thing is so easy, literally plug and play. 
Uh, we added a gallon of wash to the boiler vessel and a packet of these ceramic boil enhancers. We secured the lid, plug it in, and literally just let it go. After heating up for uh, about an hour, you'll start to see some drips. Uh, it'll start dripping slowly and kind of pick up speed. And then it's about another hour, hour and a half to collect the full distillate from that run. Uh, once you've collected that full amount of distillate, it's as simple as unplugging it. It's pretty easy. And then we put that through the carbon filter overnight. It was pretty slow, so we just let it run overnight. So we did that process twice to get a, a concentrated distillate. And then we put that back in the air still and ran both stripping runs together to get um, a concentrated distillate of about 80% ABV that we'll be cutting down and flavoring in a future video. That's this little guy right here. Boom, boom, boom. So two stripping runs, got stripped, combined, yep. spirit run, boom. That's what we got right there. So that's two gallons of 15% alcohol down to three, three, three quarters of a quart. <laughs> <laughs> 80%. <laughs> For the G30s, definitely more interaction, engagement, attention having to be paid, whereas these air stills are just awesome for setting and forgetting. The G30, uh, it's just like ballet. It's this balance yeah. of kind of time, temp, counter water flow, collecting, knowing your cuts. Very interesting to watch this process on a very small scale. Let's start with the condenser column. Not as hands-off, once again, as the air still, but not as complex as you're going to see in a minute with the pot still. Remember, this sugar wash is 15% ABV at the start. Poured that sugar wash into the boiler of the G30, attached the condenser column to the unit, as well as all the liquid ins and outs. What's happening in this setup? Can you tell me a little bit about how the condenser works? Yeah, Ilya can describe it much better than I can, but basically it's a reflux column going up and you're basically, it's packed with uh, stainless steel and copper um, saddles, yeah. they're called, uh, widgets sometimes people call them. And those cause the, the steam to recondense, drop back down. And in a nutshell, you're causing a bunch of micro distilling happening up through that column. So you're getting a very clean alcohol coming out and a stronger alcohol. Okay. So this one, we're a little less worried about taking these many, many, many cuts because it's kind of like, as long as you get the beginning and the end out of there, the middle's pretty neutral spirit. Yeah, yeah. Day one, Ilya stripping run, five gallons of wash down to two and a half liters at 90 ABV. Day two, when we were all there, we did three gallons of wash down to about one and a half liter at 90 ABV. Day three as a group, we combined and diluted it to 52% by adding almost equal amount of water. Then we ran it through once again for a spirit run, which yielded an end product of about four liters at 90% distillate. Bam! This thingy thing thing right here. Yeah. This <laughs> no joke. Um, I we, handle it like a baby. I know. We didn't <laughs> dilute it uh, the day of shooting, but we do plan to uh, gauge whether or not we want to and by how much when Ilya is here later. Um, I will say we tasted all of these along the way. Very interesting, not nearly as complex as the evolution of flavor in the pot still. Yeah. This, you could, you, the this was an easier learning one because like you're going to say, I think the beginning, the, the heads, you can, it's more harsh chemical nail polish. Yeah. And then you start picking up all oh, this little sweetness and all of a sudden that nail polish is just gone and yeah. it, it's, you get alcohol burn because it's 90% yeah. alcohol, but it's so sweet and clean. It and there is... were times that it was kind of cinnamony or berry, or maybe I'm confusing with the pot still, but either way, they in the it. distilling yeah. process, there's like these flavors that come and go and you might want to capture one segment, which is what we'll talk about right now. The pot still much more intricate. Uh, Ilya had us collecting and separating the whole way, all hands on deck, running and gunning to keep up with it. Remember, we're starting here with a 10% ABV, malt wash stripping run fairly simple you just kind of let it go maybe collect the middle 80 percent or, or whatever but Ilya's stripping run five gallons to about three and a quarter at 40 abv day two when we were all there five gallons down to about three and a half liter at again about 40 spirit run much more intricate and complex we basically set aside a whole day um because we were 
he put us to work. <laughs> like yeah. every hundred milliliters, he wanted that isolated in a jar. We were labeling it in consequential or in sequential order, yep. as well as it's slowly decreasing proof. But it wasn't decreasing by much. We're talking like ninety proof yeah, down to like maybe seventy five over the course of what we decided to keep. And it was interesting because it hung out. Like you could definitely tell you're probably in the the middle there so it hung out and as it gets closer to the tails all of a sudden that proof did drop quicker over those hundred milliliters i think that's worth a taste sweet yeah keeper? yeah i, I thought it was so. a keeper I, too I agree, yeah and we were saving all these jars because Ilya wants to really demonstrate the idea of blending and when we did our first little round of taste testing you could tell those like first six seven jars he was not happy with yeah you were noting I was, I was trying to learn. I mean, my palate, Ilya has a much better palate for this type of thing. It's very new to me. And when you're tasting that high alcohol, it is hard to discern different things. Um, but there are a few things you can, like, there's bitterness in there. Um, there's just some other, like, again, that higher alcohol where you're just, it's just nail polish or other removers. But then it starts transitioning. Yeah. And you start getting for lack of a better term, almost multi characters like yeah. grassy was noted. Um, cinnamon was one in there, I think yeah. too, that was cinnamon. super good and interesting. Like how much that was just cinnamon. Yeah. And then, yeah, towards the end, as we're getting more into the tails, which actually have more of the flavor, uh, I think that's where you noted um, a berry or a... Yeah, a little kind of strawberry, dark yeah. berry. But then at the end end, there was a definite point where it's like, this is starting to taste like meat. Yeah. <laughs> to me, it was more umami. Yeah. <laughs> Ilya kept uh, calling it like meat. Meaty. Or mineral, meat. not in a great way. Like mineral could be a good descriptor in the middle, but towards yeah. the end, it was almost like. And he did note, like, you might want some of that mineral. Because it, if it was just that mineral and none of the meatiness, it was a, a nice characteristic to it. Almost like when a Pilsner is really dry and you get some of that water character coming through. Right. So, you know, we have all these jars. The idea is we're going to blend exactly what we want, and then the rest will probably go back for another batch. That's the thing. Like, as long as you are really picky about the high quality stuff, now you have extra. It's almost like a Solera, right? It like goes into the next yeah. batch. A lot of bigger distillers will keep all their tails and just keep using that to pull out a little bit more ethanol. I could see the pot still stuff, some of that. If you don't want it, you could run it through that. Um, reflux condenser and oh. get that clean spirit out of there I, or even your think. air still if you yeah. have this exact yeah. setup um so real quick that was a lot of talk in i hope you enjoyed the really cool video um just so cool for us and this is it going was... to be even cooler when Ilya gets in here and like starts dropping like some serious technical info yeah. not just us being like here's what i did at distillation <laughs> camp this summer uh, Ilya's coming in to help us with some product videos. We're going to blend that pot still batch here, uh, dilute the condenser batch possibly, and then we're going to flavor the neutral spirit most likely with some of those still spirits. They have everything from like rum, gin, tequila, white rum, dark rum. Everything. I mean, there was things I was like, I didn't even know that existed as a, <laughs> as a liquor. spirit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So these concentrated flavorings. So we're going to play around with a bunch of those. It's not the end of our interest in distillation by far so come along on the journey yeah subscribe to our youtube channel let us know in the comments below what uh specific topics you would like maybe to see us cover because Ilya is going to be here he's going to talk about these products but he can talk about just about any other topic this versus that um yep. faqs of distillation so let us know what you're interested about until then cheers <laughs> I'm scared to like I know. <laughs> to clink them too hard. I'm gonna go pass out now.